2012. Now, I mentioned IBM. Now, I mentioned IBM, and it's really interesting what's powering IBM, at least a part of IBM's cloud, is a company called Nirvonics. So IBM and Nirvonics did a deal this year. IBM's OEMing Nirvonics' technology and delivering cloud services. So this company, Nirvonics, was out there. They were bumping along and really had a breakout year in 2011. I didn't predict that, but, um, but it happened. Um, they hired a new management team. They brought in Scott Genero from, uh, from former HDS, former DDN, former QLogic, knows the enterprise business, knows the enterprise storage business. And what you're seeing with Nirvonics is they have great technology. They just didn't really know how to package it and market it. That changed in 2011. There are very few enterprise technologies that are delivering what I would call true cloud. There's a lot of cloud washing going on, and we've talked about this here at, uh, at Wikibon and, and our partners at SiliconANGLE. What do I mean by cloud washing? People basically taking an existing product and putting a cloud face on it and saying, okay, hey, we have cloud too. Um, now, we saw this year, this past year, uh, uh, in 2011, the Oracle public cloud. Well, it's cloud, but it's expensive and it's all Oracle all the time. EMC has Atmos. You know, it's definitely cloud-like. You can build clouds with it. Um, but, you know, look at Amazon. Amazon made the model, really with elastic computing, no CapEx up front, it's all OpEx. But the question then becomes, can you guarantee quality of service? Um, look at Amazon's platinum service. It's $180,000 a year on top of the existing service. The enterprise players like Nirvonics, like a CSC for example, they're not charging extra for that you know, high availability. It's built into the service. Um, can you do audits? Enterprise customers need to do audits of the data center on, uh, uh, th that their data is being hosted on. Amazon really doesn't let you come in and do that. Can you geographically control where the data gets placed? These are the things that enterprise customers want and this is why uh, a company like, like Nirvonics is emerging and doing well. Amazon's SLA is really like this. Hey, we'll do our best, but if we don't, we're sorry, send us an email. That's really what, what the Amazon SLA is about. So people are looking for new solutions. Companies like Nirvonics are solving uh, these problems. They've got true cloud offerings. I got some inside you know, scoop on, on Nirvonics. Uh, I've talked to a number of their customers, USC, Cerner, uh, DR Fortress is a company out in Hawaii that I talked to. Uh, IBM's a customer, VMware's a customer, Cisco's a customer. You know, they don't talk about that a lot, but I've uncovered these things. Johnson & Johnson, NBC Universal. So the inside baseball on Nirvonics is they grew like crazy in 2011. Triple digit, very high triple digit sequential bookings growth in 2011. Uh, USC, I talked to them, they installed 8.5 petabytes of Nirvonics technology. So the petabytes under management, they're exploding, they're hiring like crazy. They hired the guy from Google, Paul Fruton, we've had him on theCUBE. Um, very high on this company. Um, you know, the bottom line is it's a very disruptive uh, technology from the standpoint of moving CapEx to OpEx, and it's taking share from the traditional storage model.